What's up, folks? Super excited to uh, intro the old Longboy 69C10 today. Um, we got some catching up to do. I've had this truck for a little while yet, maybe a few months, and uh, I've already done a bunch of stuff to it, and I've already discovered some things before I uh, decided I wanted to start a YouTube channel. So I'm actually going to try to do a little bit of a review, try to help you guys out with some part numbers of the stuff that I've already replaced as a top priority. And uh, then maybe you guys can give me some ideas on what to do next. For now, here's the quick and dirty. Uh, Longboy was restored originally in the 90s by a place called Blackout Window Tinting out of the valley in Southern California. Uh, I'll be able to go over all of these little items and I'll try to show you where the truck's at right now. And then, uh, got a little bit of a to-do list here, but I think I'm going to add to it a lot more. Uh, kind of give you a sense of where I'm at and where I want to head. For now, let's jump into the review and the intro, shall we? Alright, good. So let's start with the good stuff here. That's a factory 350 right there, ladies and gents. Uh, it was gone through again uh, sometime in the 90s, around 95 is what the uh, previous owner said. And uh, it was a shop truck for a window tinting place. Uh, although it came with factory window tint. Uh, it came in a, in a factory white color as well. Um, but they repainted it later with a nice cheap paint job. It's actually a black pinstripe to clean up the edge here. It's pretty janky. Um, but with the patina and the old look that 
we like on these trucks it's actually perfect uh, especially with all the uh, nicks and scratches and all that stuff that's happening here uh, so super happy with the appearance of the truck blackout window tinting don't think I really want to do anything with the outside of it for now um, let's talk about what else it did though 1969 used to have huge side markers well, they're not here let me see if I can yeah something like that they welded in a plate ground it down right before they repainted it I dig that I'm down with that uh, power brake stock power steering got everything good really good platform really awesome uh, so we're gonna have a lot of fun wrenching on this doing a couple of tweaks I don't really think I want to do anything crazy to it right now runs pretty good but I think I want to go through because the previous owner uh, really was not that good with all the little tweaks and I've had to do so many things since getting it perhaps I'll go over it I'll give you an example see this ground strap right here yeah that was disconnected previous owner couldn't figure it out why the why the truck wouldn't start sometimes ended up being no ground straps from the engine to the cab at all that were connected so I went through hooked them back up now she fires up every time super easy when I first got it the carburetor was leaking like a sieve not that it's not still leaking um, but I rebuilt the carburetor myself got one of those quadrajet kits online had to fix the uh, automatic choke this diaphragm was bad uh, so got my first rebuild of a carburetor on which was kind of nice the PCV system wasn't set up correctly either this valve cover was actually flipped the other way uh, maybe that's like a hot router thing to do but <clears throat> it bugged me that I could read Moroso here and then it was Moroso but upside down over here it totally bugged me so I flipped it back around uh, the PCV used to come from the rear on this side and I guess after spending some time on the forums I decided I wanted the PCV to come out of the front here and then have the breather in the back over there so we got that thing all fixed up the uh, hose that the previous owner was using would collapse and uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a correct PCV hose is what I'm trying to say uh, so got the correct thing in there now she's breathing real nice through the PCV burning clean smells a lot better that's pretty cool uh, still got the same fuel pump on it that I bought it with which is okay uh, same AutoZone battery that I bought it with it's totally fine I did leave the external regulator for the voltage regular in regulator in um, and replaced it with a cheap AutoZone one instead of the mechanical one it's working perfect and again that was sort of part of chasing down all the electrical issues I did the alternator as well it probably didn't need to I saved the old one this is original equipment replacement though AC Delco uh, and it's it, it fits a lot better because it's got the three wire and then the it's got a bracket that holds everything on there unlike the other one which was I think this is like a 55 amp and the other one was a 65 amp from a Corvette which sure might be a better unit but I'm not really running power through this thing so I figured I would just go OG on this got me a nice aftermarket Auga horn courtesy of the previous owner and the original ones as well so pretty gnarly when I push the horn button in this thing uh, as you can see I've got another horn for the viper alarm that's in this thing it's got like a late 90s viper in her still works perfectly uh, speaking of one thing that the viper install did was uh, I don't think this truck came with door light switches or whatever but they put some in on this thing which is pretty cool let's take a look at the dirty interior interior is super great shape though all the gauges work um, 
I threw in this tack right here just because don't you want a tack? Everybody wants a tack. I don't know. It was the only thing I could get at the hardware store. Got our 90s uh, CD deck. Removable faceplate. This little light is awesome when the Viper's on. It's, it's got the uh, red light that blinks all night, which is pretty cool. Um, and then it's nice in that, you know, you can see the paint. It's got a cheap repaint on it. I'm fine with that, dude. It's got the, what appears to be the original uh, trim pieces here, which is nice. Looks like they made up some custom ones here on the lower side so they could fit their speakers in. And these speakers are had, bro. They're totally had. They don't even match. So maybe that can be a project one day. And there's your 90s stereo amp as well. She's a big feller. Uh, there's some kind of wiring problem with the radio though because it um, it doesn't save any settings when you turn it off and then it only powers the speakers the amp will only kick on to power the speakers when the tuner's on so I'm reading about that online looks like a fairly straightforward fix to that as well so I'll probably get up under the dash here and start messing around a little bit seats in good shape I do have a tear in it working so I think I'm just gonna let it ride got a couple of little guys here these are new from when I got it so this seat is starting to rot out pretty fast and I'm okay with that uh, the best thing about the Viper being in this thing though is the keyless entry what do I think they did to this thing in the 90s uh, one thing that's kind of apparent to me and look I'm not an expert but I'm pretty sure I see some seams here for some rocker panel replacements and I haven't really gotten under there to look but I'll give you an example tons of Bondo here no seam here on the passenger side as we look in um, we see another seam here but then more importantly there's a there's a big seam right here so I feel like this rocker panel was probably replaced and uh, weld it in right here but I'm no welder have no idea I got some aftermarket door seals here that I should probably re-glue and then there's our other door sensor right there which I have no idea what they put them there I've seen so many videos online where they put them here so I'm really sort of confused as to why they're here but I'll probably run with them here. Seems legit. Got a built-in toolbox. That's pretty cool. Got a bunch of junk in there I don't need right now. I went on uh, Facebook Marketplace and I found a guy who was restoring a C10 and he actually sold me his old staggered set of 15 smoothies, which is a look I love. I love how they're all rusty and screwed up. I think that's great. These are the same tires that he <laughs> sold them to me on, so I think tires are definitely a high priority for this vehicle. Uh, the other rims were 17 inch and they had super high wall tires and then with the stock spring height, uh, this thing sat quite a bit differently when I first got it uh, than it does now. <laughs> Look at those things. Yeah, buddy. 275 60 R17s. They're not too rotted out, are they? Yeah. I've actually not looked at these with the uh, new lowered stance yet. I might actually try them. We'll see. Anybody want some original Mazda speed rims? Love my window tint. I fucking love this truck, dude. I also had a problem with the uh, alignment of the hood when, when the hood's down. And it turns out it's actually kind of a combination of factors, but one factor was that the uh, hood hinges were completely worn out on this thing. It, so I went to Old Brothers and just installed some of these. I was 
that might have been the first thing I did to this truck actually was get the hood hinges squared away um, it's still not perfect though you can see the hood hinges all the way up right here but on this side there's a gap so it really should be sitting a little higher on that hinge over there but no matter plenty of little bugs in this thing heater core is disconnected I have no idea why but I think we can assume that there's a reason why maybe one day I'll figure that out there's my Rockford Fosgate fuse for the stereo system in this thing so at some point it totally bumped uh, anyway let's take a look at the underside though because that's really what I was excited about well she's a little tight under here even with her up on the jack stands but let's see if we can't get in here and take a look so when I first got her she was tossing um, transmission fluid like it was going out of style leaking super bad from the oil filter um, and those fixes were super easy actually it was um, the filter wasn't screwed up correctly uh, fairly new oil pan which is nice nice and shiny shiny chrome oil pan there digging that long tube headers of course super excited about that I've always been stuck with the stock exhaust manifolds on these guys when I've had classics um, and then it's gonna be a little tough to see in close quarters here but um, the tranny pen was leaking a little bit so I said okay let me get rid of the stock tranny pen let's go with an aluminum guy uh, with a drain plug and uh, so I threw this on here but when I was looking at it I realized holy MF I've got a turbo 400 now there's another tell up top as well which is um, the kick down switch is electronic and I didn't know it at the time but an electronic kick down is most assuredly a turbo 400 because the 350 has a mechanical kick down uh, so I've got a nice beefy transmission in here uh, brand new flex plate have no idea what torque converter this is uh, I went ahead and replaced the starter as well uh, when I was chasing the starting issue and the ground straps and everything I just sort of went nuts on all the electricals so I got an AC Delco guy on here which is nice um, I guess I'm nice to have you can see it's a little soggy down here when I replaced the transmission fluid and the pan I actually overfilled the shit out of it and uh, since it wasn't foaming up I just went ahead and ran it out just by running her on the freeway <laughs> and now she doesn't leak at all this is kind of remnants from the uh, trying to leak from before I also made a couple of newbie 350 uh, mistakes like removing that bolt out of uh, the block near the fuel pump and it ended up puking oil out the front of the block really bad so that's kind of what all this is she really doesn't leak and uh, couldn't be happier about that let's take a look at the exhaust um, I looked at these guys this is a, what appears to me to be some kind of custom exhaust system here I had a problem with the exhaust flanges you can see they're kind of warped here um, and so I just put some new gaskets in and try to cinch these guys down as hard as they could go uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do with them long term but it is what it is Dynomax it's model number 17731 and I think they're just the medium loud ones oh yeah <laughs> well this is funny this has this this has an auxiliary tank over on the other side there and this is where the old marine switch used to poke through the carpet into the cab up there uh, I made the mistake of turning that one day and it just started puking fuel out super fast so I plugged up the lines and uh, I'm only running out of the one tank in the cab right now and uh, so I suppose on the to-do list is to uh, get all this squared away and 
see if I can't salvage that second tank. That'll be a fun project. Uh, cab mounts, they look a little janky. They're a little worn out up top here. A little mushy. More remnants of the uh, fuel line debacle back here. You can kind of see this guy not happy. So I'll have to uh, chase these around a little bit and uh, see how I can hook them back up. But for now, this is the Band-Aid right here. I uh, got myself an air hammer and a grinder. And for the first time, I, I cut some rivets. And uh, I was able to put some uh, new shock mounts. I got some aftermarket springs here, uh, some lowering springs. So it's lowered two in the front, three in the back from when I got it. Uh, KYB uh, shocks in the back, monomax up front, and then some nice gas adjust stiffies in the back. So she rides pretty good now. Uh, the lower mounts are also removed and replaced. Uh, and uh, this is way solid. My mounts up here were uh, super suspect before. They were jiggling around and, and quite noisy. So I used my air hammer, cut off this stuff, remounted this, cinched it down as tight as it would go. And uh, super happy with the result on both sides here. So that's all brand new. Also, I rebuilt the front suspension uh, lowering shocks, there's your monomaxes right there, and then the entirety of the steering linkage, I put brand new Moog parts all the way through on the front side. Uh, the mount point on the frame for these trucks, on, on this side anyway, it, it seemed like maybe the previous owner a long time ago, it, it looked like it took years to happen, but um, this was loose. And so it actually wallowed out the hole from being just big enough for the bolt to go through to like huge like this up here. Um, and I'd, I'd really have to get in there to show you, but I ended up mounting up like a washer right there. And it seems to be holding well. I've heard of guys like maybe welding that washer in uh, just to make it a more permanent fix for now. But not entirely sure. As you can see, back here is just, you know, old truck style, nice and dirty. Got some grease leaking out of my, out of my uh, boot there. Shit happens, man. I probably overfilled it. Got no grease in this bushing down here. <laughs> or some. But that doesn't look entirely happy now, does it? Might have to take a look at the other side one day as well. But I'd really rather not pop this ball joint again if I can help it. Um, let's take a look at some other things. I actually had one of the right front ball joints just completely failed on me. And that, my friends, is a failed lower ball joint coming out of my driveway, thank God, and not going any kind of real speed. Um, but the front right dropped to the ground. I had to call AAA to come pick her up and put her back on my driveway so that I could fix her. Uh, but I made a decision that day I was going to rebuild all of these ball joints, tie rod ends, everything except the uh, center link here is a new Moog part. I'll try to throw maybe a kit number up there for you. So you can kind of see that. Um, but ever since, super solid. Pitman arm, idler arm, all brand new. Um, yeah, tie rod ends, all brand new. Ball joints, top and bottom, up front, all brand new. She's got drums all the way around. Um, I think I'm going to leave it like that for a little while. I don't have any problem with the stopping. I did take off the drums and I took a look at the shoes and the shoes are... The, sh the shoes are toast. They're they're all cracked and gross. So if there is a problem with the stopping, it's actually that right now, just at the shoes. So I, I might actually just rebuild these drums. And then, you know, there's a bunch of little easy stuff. There's a bunch of little easy stuff like these uh, stabilizer bar, the sway bar bushings. Totally toast. And uh, 
that's an easy fix right there. I can definitely have a look at these. I think this one's actually hitting uh, when I'm on the road because I do hear a little noise over here. Generally, this truck is super rust-free. Southern California truck since the beginning. And uh, all the benefits you get. Barely any rust at all anywhere. Frame is super solid. Plenty to work with. Very cool. <coughs> Underneath the bed is nice and clean. Yeah. Super cool. Here's our second gas tank right here. Got the world's largest ground strap on it. That's funny. Uh, this is not in use right now. I have no idea what's going on in there. Maybe one day I'll take her down and we'll see if we can't get her going. The filler is right here in the wheel well and it's all gunked up. I, I really just have ignored it. I really just have not tried to look at this at all. Looks like a custom job to me. One of the best things I've done on this truck, though, is replace the outdoor lighting. Um, got some JW speaker headlamps here. They throw a nice, clean beam with a hard line, just like the new school HIDs, or whatever they're called now, the new school LEDs. And uh, hella bright and visible. Super stoked on these units very safe perhaps the best thing about this truck is I still have my fan shroud she's not connected down low very well that, that's nothing a drill and a zip tie can't fix what do you guys think I should prioritize next let me know let me know in the comments